bid you good day. Today we have a topic for your consideration, one that I have placed accordingly, ordered accordingly, so that it would sit well with you at this particular time, at this particular juncture. Our subject for today then is beliefs, what they are, where they come from, how they compare with other aspects that are stored in similar places such as ideas and thoughts. And so we will speak of where they come from, how useful or not they are for you at this perspective, time, historically active time, and how they have served you in the past or will perhaps serve you in the future. So first, we must understand the structure of a belief. For instance, is a belief positive or negative? If you believe that the end of the world is near, is that a positive or a negative belief? Well, it is a matter of perspective, isn't it? If you believe that it is the dawn of a new world, that assumes the belief in an old world, a transition world, or the end of a world. So beliefs are also assumptions that one makes according to what is beneath or below that. What about beliefs regarding prophecies and predictions? Do you believe in them or not? Do you want to believe what they are, what they say, how they are represented? This also makes a very interesting and unique difference. Do you believe in the posit ideas of heaven or hell, where you live, where you will go, based upon what? How did these ideas become beliefs, and why do they matter to you at all? Why does one need to live with beliefs in a structure at all? Where are they stored? do you believe? Where do they come from? And where do they go when you finally dismiss them or replace them? In essence, a belief is no more than a premise of something that you believe to be true, or in some cases that you believe to be false. But for the most part, Beliefs are true, at least to the mind. Now, the mind stores beliefs in a place that stores all mental representations. Is an idea a mental representation? Well, already we found the gray areas then. An idea is a mental representation if it is an idea that has been thought of for a very, very long time, and if there is a belief that supports that idea. For instance, if the thought or the idea is that mankind is slowly or quickly using all of the resources of the planet and that these are in limited supply, well, it is only an idea that you had better get on with doing something about it. But the idea is a mental representation because it is stored in the belief of lack versus plenty. It is stored in the belief that it is finite rather than infinite. So the difference then between beliefs and ideas is that ideas do not depend upon beliefs. If an idea does depend upon a belief, if it is found to be dependent upon a belief, then it is not a true or free idea. It is a mental representation. It can be sorted from the beliefs. It has a slight different frequency about it. An idea sounds a little bit more free, doesn't it? 
It sounds a little bit less conditioned than a belief, doesn't it? But here I tell you that the differences between these are infinitesimal, unless, as we will discover later, that one can add consciousness to an idea, or a thought, or a belief. Consciousness, we could see, is that which simply purifies a thought, or an idea, or belief. Consciousness dislodges it from the past and makes it active in the present. That is all that consciousness does. Consciousness is not necessarily evolution, but it has been linked to that. Consciousness is not spirit nor spirituality. If you like, consciousness is that which frees a thought or an idea, a purpose, a person. It frees one from the trap, from the quicksand of the past. It allows one to be present in the moment. It allows one to rethink or think for the first time or think or create with a new idea. It purifies the process. It allows that which is dense to at least temporarily be separated from the light. It separates matter from light, if you like, allowing one the independence to choose. So consciousness brings choice and it allows one to free oneself from past beliefs. Why do we say past beliefs? Because all beliefs are rooted in the past. In order to believe something, it must have been shown to you, ingrained in you, conditioned in you, prejudiced. Everything that you believe in, whether or not you can prove it, whether or not you have experienced it, comes to you from the past. A belief in someone or something is very similar. However, there are certain associations that one could make. If you believe in someone, for instance, well, that includes a measure of faith. Now you have added faith or trust to a belief. The belief still comes from the past, but in some ways you have elevated it because you have invested yourself in that belief. You have invested into it, entrusted to it, the idea of faith or trust. This means that in some way you have added something to do with the now moment or something that you hope will continue to be true in the now moment. And so you are adding to the longevity of a thought that you believe in. When you believe in something, you will add to it your consciousness, your ideas, your hearts, your passions, your trust, your faith. And so you will continue to further that person or that thing or that quest. When you believe in someone or something, it does not matter whether it is right or wrong, true or false. Your faith and your trust do not necessarily require those things. However, it goes unsaid in some way that when you put your trust in something or someone, your belief in them or that, that there is something inherently important or true about it or them as far as you are concerned. So as you add consciousness, faith and trust into a belief, the belief becomes stronger at least for you. Now here is where you must take care because the stronger a belief becomes 
in some ways also the more dense it becomes, the more important it is that someone measure up to the belief that you have placed in them, to the faith that you have bestowed upon them or that. And so now there is a part of you that wants it or them to be right or true or to win or to be uplifted or what it will be. So you have invested hope, faith, trust and consciousness. And perhaps you begin to see then how beliefs become as strong as they do, as rooted as they do, because other individuals just like you, wise and important and creative individuals like you, have found at different times good reasons, reasonability to invest in a thought that later becomes a belief. So, a belief for the most part is a closed-ended system. A thought or an idea is open-ended. You say, well, I can change my mind. Yes, you can change your mind. You can change your thought. You can redirect an idea. For your mind is creative. But beliefs, well, again, not only do they come from the past, but they have received a good deal of reinforcement from you, from many others, from realities, from truths, from falsities, from stories, from mythologies and histories that have been written and rewritten to suit the variety of beliefs until what you have left is the investment in them more than the belief itself. It is rare that you will have the ability to prove to yourself that the belief is right. Because of the law of polarities, if you believe it or that or him or her is right, there will be that which opposes it. There will be that that says it is wrong, even if you say it is right. Now perhaps you will begin to see why I have chosen this topic at this time. Because in essence, humanity and the earth together have now entered what you could call the neutral zone, the null zone, in which polarities are either attempting to reconcile themselves or to lash themselves one to the other, to crash into themselves or to move into such opposite places that it is difficult for them to see each other or the similarities between them. Certainly you see this at play in your governments. For all those who say it is a good idea, there are those that will say it is a terrible idea, and those who believe in that idea are also terrible. You will see this played out in those that do battle with each other now, whether it is a battle of words or a battle of forces. You will see it and do played out in the systems of economies, the educations, and in fact in almost anything. You even see it played out in the weather because the weather as well is taking on from the earth as well all of the polarities, receiving these from the elements, from the earth and the water and the fires. It seems as if something comes into balance only to fall out of balance. And part of that is natural or neutral at the end or close of an age. Again, making it very important that we explore this subject at this time. A belief, then, is not necessarily based upon knowledge but the believer would like to believe that it is. If you believe a statement is true, you believe 
that there is enough knowledge behind it for it to sit atop it, to back it up. And so you, as the believer, then, are being very reasonable, very assertive. You have evidence. You are just in your belief. You have guidance leading you to believe that something is true or true enough that you can believe in it or them. To some degree, humanity depends upon these beliefs a great deal. One of the reasons that you depend upon beliefs is that you do not yet understand the true system of cause and effect. And so you are at the effect of causes that you cannot completely see. And because of that, you are doing your level, neutral, best to believe in something true and important. Believe that life matters. Believe that there is purpose in all moments, in all things. Believe that goodness prevails. Believe that the best is yet to come and that the decisions that you are making are relatively adequate, creative, important and sustaining. I do not bring this topic to you to find argument in what or who you are, only to make where possible a place, an opening for you to discard certain beliefs that no longer serve you and, if at all possible, to prevent others from being taken on at least too quickly. Or, if you will take on other beliefs, to do so out of your own choice, out of your own wisdom, out of a new knowledge rather than an old one, out of one that you create or identify for yourself, or one that you are relatively certain will still allow you to be conscious within the belief. Again, I remind you that beliefs, for the most part, come from the past. Well, in some ways, that is a little bit like saying that they are dead, isn't it? Now, do you believe in the Mayan calendar? Is the Mayan calendar dead? No. However, it is, was, a calendar created by a long ago race. It was. That was created in the past for another time and another race. Today, many, many believe in the importance of that calendar and of certain dates contained inherent within that calendar that are quickly approaching. Is this right or wrong? Neither. Is it based upon knowledge? Well, yes, but not your knowledge. Not your own empirical knowledge. Not your own research in which you could place yourself accurately at that time, understanding the language, the positions of the celestial bodies, and, again, the beliefs of those people. If you believe in the Mayan calendar, just as an example, you are also then choosing, consciously or unconsciously, to believe in a people that are no longer. You are believing in their remnants and what they have left behind. You are believing in their beliefs because they created their calendar based upon what they believed to be accurate and true. Now then, to be correct, you are believing in something that is not yours but someone else's, of another time, another place, another language, and based upon a belief that another believed. Second, or third-hand ideas and beliefs. 
Why do you believe in this calendar, then? Again, I tell you, it is only an example, one that I have selected. You believe in this because it gives you a foundation, because it gives you a place, a platform to stand upon from where you believe you can open-endedly reach to the next layer or the next place in your understanding. So a part of you lives in the past where that belief is stored, from where it was recorded, and now you have surrounded it with both mental representations of possible futures, and these are somewhat based upon current or future beliefs that others have combined with the past ones in order to aid either a decision-making ability or simply a degree to understand what was, hoping that that will allow you to understand what is. So a belief, then, while it is not knowledge, it is a structure that allows you to be guided by the past in a direction that you believe to be true or accurate or sustainable or beneficial in this case. Now, we can also then explore a false belief. A false belief is not simply that which is not true. A false belief is simply that which has no basis in knowledge. It is, however, sincere. It cannot be proven, but neither can many of the truer beliefs. A false belief, however, is one that is not generally supported or supportive of true or truth. It is not a measure of truth or accuracy. It is simply one that is not generally supportive. So you see that to distinguish between that which is true or that which is false is an individual matter. One can invest oneself in a belief whether or not it is true. If you want to believe something or in someone, you will. If you want to believe in someone or something, you will, whether or not it is accurate or true, whether or not it is sustainable. And why is that then? Why? If in some ways you will say that your entire life is about the search for the truth, the discovery of knowledge, the uncovering of wellness, to lead yourself and others to the new and the next and the most open mind as possible, how and why? Would you then rely upon beliefs that have come from the past? More than likely from other peoples and other beliefs that have also been extracted from the past and where truth or falsity cannot be accurately discerned. And the answer to this is that the mind wishes to have a disposition. What you are wishes, very strongly desires, to have a certain disposition to or for or against something. It is human nature to do so. Your divine nature, then, is not as interested in your beliefs. Your human nature is. So now we have reached an interesting point of distinction. When you are in your belief structure, the moment you say or think, Oh yes, I believe in that. That is your human nature. 
That is the part of you that wishes to be or know or survive or belong to a certain group, organizational facts and ideas. It is the human nature part of you that believes in a past and a present and a future. It is this part of you that believes in the creation story, in all of your mythologies, in the histories, because as you well know, your histories are not written nor recorded accurately, and yet you believe in them for the most part. And so the human nature wishes to believe in the linear thought, in the density of this, whether or not it is accurately true or fictionally true. To say that something is fictionally true is not false. It is simply to say that collectively all or most of humanity would find agreement, for instance, in a certain myth to do with your evolution, your creative, the human journey, how the human being was constructed or evolved from what and when and to what end. All of this belongs to the collective mythology of being and human kind all subscribe to this true be told if you did not subscribe to this you would find it very difficult to be in a human body and here momentarily I address those that find it just that so difficult life on earth so so very difficult to believe anything or anyone. So difficult to conceive that any thing or thought or event or deed truly matters. Now, you may say that this applies to you generally, but the particular statements that I have just offered belong to a very small percentage of the population. For although there have certainly been moments in your life where you have said it doesn't matter and I don't matter or life doesn't matter, these have been in uncomfortable moments and situations. While it has been true for you, it is not consistently true. In other words, it is not part of your belief system. A belief system, then, forms the foundations of understandings from which one finds it very difficult to move beyond. These have a very strong gravitational pull, and it is difficult to extract oneself from that process. The belief system then is just that it is more than just a collection of individual beliefs that one can take or keep or discard or share they form the basis of a system perhaps you have heard Gaia say over the last several years that all systems are beginning to disintegrate dismantle, recreate, repair, and like that. Perhaps you have heard Gaia say that it is time to remake memories, that some will be deleted, others added, remade. All of this, then, can be said to affect, and greatly, all core systems and beliefs also then form a core system. Core beliefs are those that are actively thought about. Those are the ones that you know are true or not true, but they are your core beliefs. You will always believe this about that. You will never believe that about this person or that. They are your core beliefs. 
They are your foundation. It is very difficult to shake them loose unless they are so challenged, so false as it would be, that they could be proven to you even not once, again and again and again before your core belief would change. A core belief is something that you believe about life itself, about yourself, about others whom you care and respect. The same is true of those whom, for instance, you may despise, or ideas that you belong, believe strongly against. If you believe strongly against slavery, for instance, that is a core belief, and nothing and no one could take you to the belief that there is rightness in that theory or that system. That is part of your core belief. However, lodged in between the core beliefs are those that we have mentioned earlier called dispositional beliefs. And these are ones that can at least be truncated. In other words, you can change the branch. The trunk itself may be very thick, the roots deep, so that they cannot be changed. Well, but a branch that moves in a slight different degree, it's just a branch of the family tree, that branch might think different. It has a different disposition. You might say it has a mind of its own. There, that is a phrase that you may understand well. So a dispositional belief has what seems to be a mind of its own. A dispositional belief can be influenced. It can be influenced because you have no true proof about it. You believe it because you believe it, because it is associated with another family of beliefs. Or perhaps you believe it because someone else whom you trust or know or respect believes it. On your own, you have no true interest in it. In fact, you have hardly ever thought that thought. It simply hasn't come up yet. But since someone who you know and trust or want to trust, or need to trust, believes in it, well, you might be disposed to believe in it as well. Dispositional beliefs can be predisposed or post-disposed. This means that associated with a prior belief or a core belief, you are predisposed toward that. However, now you meet someone who is completely against the idea and this is a new introduction to you that is reinforced again and again. So in a post-dispositional way, you are convinced to change your ideal or your structure. And so now you are post-disposed to believe otherwise. Dispositional beliefs are those things that are tools to those who understand them those who would seek to convince you of something, they will use what they know of dispositional beliefs to do so. Your advertising agency, for instance, understands how beliefs work and how to gently change not the trunk of the tree nor its roots, but how to guide the offshoots, how to make certain that the new branches in the new seasons lean this way or that way. This is why the advertisement industry is very interested in those that are very young or very old, because these belief systems are the ones that are most easily molded, most easily disposed in a way that is suitable to those that wish you to think or be or do. 
To understand this, you will see why you will see the same advertisement again and again and again. Because in order to shift or to move, whether it is the branch of a tree or a dispositional belief, one of the ways to do that is to reinforce and repeat. Reinforce and repeat. Reinforce a new or certain belief. Repeat that again and again and again. And knowing that both mind and brain are so taken with imagery, well, you can see how, whether it is your print media or the television or your internet structure systems, have learned to capitalize upon that. Repetition again and again. Influence, conditioning, prejudice. And so your mind becomes prejudice, influenced to one thought or one idea above another or beyond another. And this is very much understood by those who study it. Therefore, it is important for you as well to understand how the mind or the structure of your mind works so that you can also work with it to form or move ideas or to move them out of the way. Other ways to condition dispositional beliefs, as we have said, come with strong imagery. Strong imagery of very positive or negative emotions. For instance, images of sex and love and war and battles and strength. Well, these work very closely with your beliefs because integral to the beliefs is how this structure is held in place. How are beliefs suspended in your thought waves? Why is it that a belief does not simply come and go the way a thought or an idea does? You have many, many thoughts and ideas. You come and go with them. And you will say, oh, that is a very good thought. Oh, no, that is a, not a good thought. I can let that one go. And they come and go and come and go. But beliefs... They are so much stronger than that, aren't they? They don't come and go nearly as much. They like to be in place, to sit there as a foundation and a structure. So beliefs uphold thoughts that come and go. If your beliefs are conditioned and the thoughts that come and go are also conditioned, or predisposed, you begin to see that it is a trap. Therefore, the reason for our discourse, for this discussion, for Gaia wishes for you to free yourself from all prisons, from all traps, whether they are those that have been imposed upon you by yourself, or your beliefs that others can impose upon you. It is an important time now on the cusp of a new age to be and to feel as free as possible so that you can create, so that you can think and be in the present moment, so that you will create for yourselves the future that you wish to have, that you wish and can create. Therefore, what are we to do with all this information now? It is not that Gaia has offered all of this to you only for you to realize that you are trapped and have always been so, that you are conditioned to believe all things and cannot escape from that. No, it is not the case at all. So here then we begin the second 
phase of this discussion, part two, which is simply for you to understand what you can do with your beliefs. After all, they are yours. They are yours because you have brought them with you from another time and another place. They are yours because as you have observed in a very young thought, at a very youthful age, how others came and went and what they did successfully or not, your mind began to create a system of beliefs, core beliefs, and those that could then be disposed, predisposed beliefs about life on earth, about purpose, about existence, about survival, and like that. And so you began to justify, to make just. You see, beliefs do not need to be true for you to have them. They become yours once you determine that they are just. If you determine that it is just or fair, or that's how it is, that is when it becomes a core belief. And so begin to ask yourself now, do you believe in those things that are true or those things that are just? If they are not just or not true, would you be willing to move them over in favor of something else that may not exactly be a belief yet, something that we could call an exploration of experience. An exploration of experience is another way to say a journey to the unknown. You are journeying to the next thought. That next thought can be as simple as the next moment or it can be a fathomable distance away. Are you willing, are you able to allow yourself to journey into an exploration of experience? This means that you will create the experience out of your own thoughts or what you draw to you rather than what you have been predisposed to believe by another or even by yourself. You can begin by asking yourself then, do you believe what you want to believe, what you know based upon true and empirical knowledge that you believe? Do you believe what others want you to believe? Or do you simply believe in what is the common belief? Because, well, the majority must be right after all. Here is another question for you to consider. Can you exist without beliefs? What would you do without your core beliefs? What would you do if you did not any longer believe, because you had no proof to base it upon, that gravity held you to the earth? If based on the fact that you had no proof of this, and so you said to yourself, without proof, I cannot believe this, would you float away or would the laws of physics still hold you to the ground? Part of you will say, well, physics is physics. It is a science after all. Many before me have proven it. Therefore, I will trust that physics will still hold me to the ground. Well, the fact that you trust that is a belief. You believe in the laws of physics. And so again, what would life be like if you did not have this belief? Would you still be tethered to the earth or would you float away? The answer to this is that both are possible. It would require the most active ability of you to think thoughts, true thoughts, accurate thoughts, scientific thoughts, logical thoughts. 
you see there is an entire system of thoughts that lives just above beliefs or core beliefs. They would still act in your favor. What I am suggesting is that you begin to move, shift, easily and lightly from beliefs to a system of thoughts which is lighter and based upon true knowledge. True knowledge does not come from the past. True knowledge lives. Living knowledge. The living tree of life. The living resonance between your pulse and heartbeat and that of the earth. The living thought of heaven on earth rather than the idea or the belief that there is a heaven that awaits you beyond this earth. Living thoughts, purified, rarefied, distilled thoughts. One of the ways to do this is to begin to lightly move away from beliefs by recognizing what they are, where they come from, whether or not they are truly significant in your life. In other words, must you believe in them? If you remove your belief in something or someone, does it make it less than real? It is something for you to discover. If you believe in a certain hero, is that person less of a hero because you are no longer certain whether they are or not? You see, in essence, what I am suggesting is that you are guided by living principles that can uplift and carry, suggest and create to you rather than what has been said or written or determined as accurate or predicted or made to be true. Remember that the mind, the brain, is predisposed to want to believe in something and someone, whether or not it is accurate or not because it firms a firmer foundation using a very purposeful example then what of the many dire predictions for the earth now do you believe in them or not you see here we have found one of the gray areas you are not quite certain what to do you do not want to believe in the dire. However, certain knowledgeable or influential individuals have posited certain theories that seem real enough. They seem possible enough so they might be. Well, what if your thought process very lightly held them and said, yes, it might be, and it might also be completely different. Yes, it might be as they say. However, my own, my own individual awareness now seeks the future rather than the past. Since what has been predicted has come from the past and has not a basis from the future yet, I will have an open mind or an open thought. And so one of the ways to move slightly, easily and gently in regard to beliefs is to allow for the thought, the possibility of the possible. If you allow for the possible, then again, based upon the laws of polarities, you will allow for the impossible. Now, 
To allow for the impossible is a very simple thing to do, especially because we are asking that you do not believe in it or anything. So you do not need to believe in the impossible. All we are suggesting is that you also do not need to believe in the possible or the probable. This seems a bit tricky, almost a little bit frightening. Well, what will I do then? If I don't believe in the possible or the probable or the impossible, what is there to believe in? Ah, exactly. What is there to believe in? Well, nothing. Believe in nothing. Frightening? Yes. However, if you believe in nothing whenever possible, it will allow every possibility to present itself to you. If every possibility is presented to you, can you see that you may have more choice? Can you see that this may be a way to free yourself from your past, from thoughts and situations that you have created for yourself, from moments in which you have said to yourself, I am stuck, but there is no other way. This is just how it is now. It is how it must be. Can you see that there is a benefit in freeing yourself simply by saying I am not certain I believe that now or any longer. Better it is if you do not challenge yourself or go to war with yourself because after all you will only be at war with yourself and the beliefs strong and dense as they are well it would not be long before they convince you that this is a very silly exercise and who would do it anyway or it is just an exercise yes I suppose I can do it for a few minutes or a few days but sooner or later I'll see that what I was doing was just fine and not altogether and what I am doing and living is not so terrible after all well it's not however if you can dismiss beliefs that you consider to be negative, would that not be well suited to your nature? And if you could dismiss beliefs, even those that you believe are positive, would those not also free you to explore new ideas, sincere ideas? You see, in essence, what Gaia is suggesting is that you allow each moment, each thought to reveal itself to you in the moment so that you do not say, well, yesterday was like this, so tomorrow more than likely will too. It is Gaia that wishes to offer to you freedom even as later we will explore subjects to do with sovereignty. If you cannot free yourself from a belief, it is difficult to imagine that you are sovereign among and to all things. So here is a beginning place at an appropriate time on the cusp of a new age for you to begin to determine what you are and how you are and why you are, and how to begin to remake, not simply bargains with your self, not simply resolutions as you will do at year end or year front, but to begin to remake the very process, the very systems by which you believe life operates. All of this will lead to higher and greater intuitional capabilities, telepathy. You have heard Gaia speak of this before. Telepathy takes place 
in the moment. Telepathy is not based upon what you believe that the brain is capable of or what the mind can transfer from here to there. Telepathy is the very simple communicative essence of being in the moment with the one, the individual, and the all, or the multiplicity of the self. It allows self to communicate with self, but in a broader spectrum, so that it, or you, could also reach to others. This is another subject that we will address as we continue in this advancing program. In essence, we are dislodging prior ideas in order to allow new ones to descend. Yes, ideas almost like doves will descend into your awareness. And the avoidance that Gaia seeks is that as the new or newer thoughts and ideas arrive, that they are not filed mechanically into your beliefs, that they are allowed to be alive, organic. Then we will lightly implant them in newer regions of mind and brain where you can actively call upon them. Now, in the meantime, if you believe or do not believe, well, it is only a system. A belief system is just that. It will be a hindrance to you in the times and places in which it is, and an asset in certain ways, for it has served you. It has allowed you to manage your thoughts, to manage your identity within certain peer groups, to make certain decisions, although they may not necessarily have been creative choices. You make decisions based upon beliefs and structure. You make creative choices based upon desire, possibilities and impossibilities. Perhaps you can begin to see the merit of what Gaia is directing then. The difference between ideas and thoughts and beliefs are simply how alive they are, where they reside within you, whether indeed they are new, whether they are practical and useful, ideas and ideals, thoughts, tangibles and intangibles, whether or not they are ones that you would keep to yourself or share with others, and in fact where they have come from. Look and see when an idea is very firm, if it has come from the past or if it is indicative of a future that you are aspiring to create. In terms of what else you can do to assist this process, when you have an opportunity to look in a mirror or hold an object up so that you can see it in a mirror, begin to say what you believe to be true either about you, if you are using yourself objectively, for this is an objective exercise, or an object then. Determine what you believe is true and then ask yourself, how do you know or believe that truth? If it is an object, you may ask yourself, did it come with the instruction manual? Do I believe it because I have seen it operationally at work? Do I believe it because it has been suggested on the good word or advice or another? Is it commonplace to all of life and everyone believes in it, so I do too? And once you have determined everything that you can believe about something, begin to see how much of that is true, necessarily true, provably true, creatively true, how much of it has been dispositional 
in your belief and begin to see how important it is that you believe this or that about it or about you. What might it or you be like if you begin to dismantle just a few of the beliefs? Begin to determine whether something is a simple thought or if it is a belief. If it is a thought, it is more than likely that you will be able to set it aside, either in favor of a different thought or one that may come to you later. If it is a belief, you will find it very difficult to set it aside. If it is a core belief, you will find it near and next to impossible. So here is a game, if you like, to play, to see where your own belief system is layered and structured, how dense it is. This exercise will be simple or difficult, depending upon who and how you are. Another simple exercise, and it is best that you do so only with individuals that you trust as well, is to begin to challenge all thoughts that are dense, all beliefs. Challenge them. How do I know that is true? Why do I believe that is true? Must I believe that is true? Will anything happen to me or to it if I stop believing in that or them? You see, what if you remove your investment? Does it matter? Begin to determine the beliefs in that way. Challenge what you know, whether it is true or not, whether it is important that you believe that it is true or not. Is it important that you believe that 2012 is an important year? Does it matter at all whether you believe in it or not? Does it matter whether you agree with others about the resources of the earth and whether they are plenty or short supply? Challenge what you believe. See if it is only a thought or a belief. Where possible, it is also well for you not to conclude anything. You see, beliefs for the most part have conclusions. This is what you believe. Well, this is just how it is. You conclude it. It is finite. If you wish to determine whether something is a belief or not, see if it must have a conclusion. It must be this way or else, or it has always been this way, and so I am certain that it will continue to be this way. Whenever possible, do not conclude. You may say to yourself, well, my experience has shown that until now it was that way or has been, but I no longer know if that is true. I am no longer willing to stake my life upon it, or I am no longer willing to say it as fact to another because I am not certain. This will allow you to have an open mind. Now, other than the simple thought that an open mind is better than a closed mind, or it simply sounds more socially, culturally acceptable to say, I'm a very open-minded person. What are the other obvious benefits? An open mind allows travel to be more quickly. It allows thoughts to travel from here to there or to wherever without needing to know where here is and where there is. An open system is one that you trust yourself and others to participate in. In your computer models, you have open source systems. This is similar to that. An open source system where you are concerned will allow the flow of ideas, new or old, temporary, to come and to go freely. If ideas come and go freely, you will also come and go more freely. As ideas are presented to you, 
you will evaluate them more creatively without needing to hold on to them for dear life for it may be the only lifesaver that you are thrown in an open-minded or open-sourced system there is always something else coming for you are now part of the all you will still have your knowledge base to screen you will not lose your ability to discern and at first you will think that it will make for a busier mind but in essence that will not be the case at all because those thoughts that do not serve you or are not truly for you or about you will simply continue along that open corridor they will not need to be sifted through they will continue to move and you will become more aware of the thoughts that are creative in nature or more related to you now lastly strange as it will sound to you i will ask you not to believe a certain word that i have offered to you in this speaking for i do not require it and it will not be of assistance to you remember this conversation this dialogue as an open one a simple exchange of thoughts and ideas but for heaven's sake and earth's sake as well do not believe a single word i have said until the next moment sweet ones i bid you good day